All right, welcome to Talk Dead to Me. This is the new podcast from Skybound Entertainment, our first podcast we've ever done. We are going to cover The Walking Dead on a weekly basis. It only took us 10 seasons to realize we needed a podcast, and here we are. With me, as always, are my two co-hosts, Alexander August and Woody Tondorf. Alexander, how you doing? I'm doing so, so well. Excited to be here for an inaugural episode of the world's first Walking Dead podcast. That's great. Mary killed Daryl, Carol, Rick. Mary Carol, kill Daryl, and obviously Rick. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's actually the perfect, um, that's the perfect balance. Uh, Woody seems to agree. Woody, uh, my other co-host, what do you think? I, I don't agree. I, I wholeheartedly do not agree. Okay. I think in I, five seconds or less, who's your fucking Mary Carol, Carol. Uh, kill Rick and fuck Daryl. Well, Perfect. Love it. All right. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a spicier podcast than you might uh, hear. Otherwise, the whole conceit of this podcast is we're going to do it sort of sports talk style where we go through a bunch of topics in a short period of time, try to cover everything that happened that week, have interesting guests, fun segments, and we're just going to have a lot of fun here. So without further ado, let's give you guys a quick recap of season nine, a quick refresher. If you need it. So season nine had two major time jumps. Uh, the first one was a year after all at war. And then the second one happened after Rick's departure in episode five. We skipped ahead six years. Now Rick was presumed dead after getting exploded on a bridge. Uh, we actually know he was taken away in a helicopter uh, by Jadis's community. But anyway, six years later, Judith is now kind of like a little badass, a little ass kicker, if you will. And a lot of things have changed. We have new characters, uh, the communities are different, and Michonne's wearing her hair to the side. All right, so outside of the time jumps, we also had a lot of other things going on. Alexander, take it away. Well, the community spent a lot of season nine pretty fractured. Their relationship suffered after Michonne and Daryl encountered one of Michonne's old friends who had managed to survive, but had also raised a gaggle of murderous children. It got really ugly. Tough Mich episode. Yeah, yeah. Michonne was pretty traumatized and basically decided to isolate Alexandria from everyone and have no outside relationships and basically put the community under lock and key for an extended period of time, which not a lot of people agreed with. So Hilltop, Kingdom, Oceanside, and Alexandria remained splintered for some time until Zeke managed to get everyone back together. And season nine ends with the community signing a pact that basically confirms that they'll protect each other and have relationships with each other. And everybody's back on the same page by the start of season 10. Before all that happened, we did get introduced to a new villain group named the Whisperers. Woody, who are these people? Uh, the Whisperers are a bunch of uh, very well uh, self-adjusted folks who decide to wander around the apocalypse wearing the skins of people. Uh, Reasonable. And, yeah, you know, like you do. Dead it's, people. Yeah, which honestly is a very legitimate strategy. If you're putting guts around yourselves in like seasons one and two, like naturally you want to step it up into you know a nice full-length suit. Um, they are terrifying. They are more animalistic than people. And the Whispers are led by a bunch of heavy hitters, both in terms of acting ability and in terms of brutality. Number one, obviously, being Alpha, who is played by the incomparable Samantha Morton, who is just really, really great in it. Uh, her number two, Natch, is named Beta, who's played by Ryan Hurst, who you might know from Sons of Anarchy as Ope. Uh, and Alpha has a daughter named Lydia, who's uh, played by Cassidy McClincy, who does a fantastic job, who is just the teenager amongst all of the skinwalkers being like, this may not be the life for me. They are terrific. They are an enemy unlike any enemy that we've met before in The Walking Dead. They cannot be reasoned or bargained with. And for that reason, they are absolutely shit your pants terrifying. I agree. Yes. Uh, so, Alexander, so what kind of uh, wraps up the season? Uh, well, in Ezekiel's attempts to bring the communities back together, he holds a fair and invites everyone there. He manages to find some people to ferry people safely to the fair. Unfortunately, things get complicated. When mostly. Uh, yeah, mostly. Unfortunately, things get complicated when Alpha and I would assume some several, several Whisperer teammates manage to infiltrate the fair and kidnap 12 people who later wind up with heads on pikes, marking alpha's southern border and we could call that shots fired the season ends with carol leaving ezekiel uh the kingdom effectively breaking apart months later when it becomes and during winter time when it becomes very clear that they do not have the infrastructure to keep people warm and to stay in that settlement in the face of a really really harsh winter and so what while we do have communities that are bound together by the end of season nine 
we also have people who are pretty broken by this tragedy. <laughs> oh, and there's also a giant herd of like thousands and thousands and thousands of bone zombies that are in a canyon somewhere that are just waiting to just like be unleashed by the whispers to walk over everything. Yeah, which is effectively how Alpha is planning on getting everyone to stay on their side of the border and leave her and her crazy tribe alone. Pretty effective deterrent. All right, and that wraps up uh, season nine. So now we're on to season 10. This is the season 10 preview. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Very exciting. Obviously, uh, a lot of these storylines are based on uh, Robert Kirkman's comics. Even if you've read the comics like I have, you still may not be able to predict what's going to happen. They always tend to change things, leave things out. So we're just going to go in and give our take on what we think is going to happen based on what we've read from the comics. Now, this is a comic spoiler. So just letting you know, we're not saying this is going to happen in the show. But in the comics, one of the main parts of the Whisper War is the death of Alpha. Woody, tell me about that. Yeah, it's a real Franz Ferdinand moment. Um, they... What happens is uh, Negan gets out of his cell thanks to a little twerp named Brandon. He skewers Brandon right at the uh, right at the border, ingratiates himself into the whispers in like the most Negan way possible. And then they have a moment where Negan like romances Alpha. They go off away into like the darkness, and you're like, oh my god, are they gonna have an uncomfortable smooch? And then nope, he cuts her head off and then brings it over to Rick like a cat bringing you a mouse, being like, look, I did good. And then it really kicks off from there. A really mangy, rabid, messed up cat. Yeah, that loves leather jackets. Yeah. yeah. So what happens then is Beta takes over the Whispers, and that is actually what starts the Whisperer War. Uh, so what do we think is going to happen in Season 10? Do you think that same sort of events will play out? Um, as you'll see in a clip later uh, from the red carpet, Jeffrey Dean Morgan does say Negan at some point will escape again. So... Do we think the same thing's going to play out? I hope not because I really love Samantha Morton and I think she's brought a level. I think Samantha Morton is, and fight me on this, I think she's the most terrifying villain The Walking Dead has ever produced. Absolutely. It's, I mean, she is balls to the wall, stone cold nuts. In all seriousness, she's very, very frightening in how utterly committed she is to ruling this new world that she's built for herself. There's nothing that she won't do or won't kill. She puts Negan completely to shame. It's an interesting twist, but I always felt like she went out way too soon. I wanted to see her kind of affect the Whisperer War and lead it in yeah. some capacity. And so unless they're going to give her a, a degree of depth that, mean, that points to the idea that she wouldn't actually engage in all-out war, that she really is kind of like a Negan in the sense that she kills the people she has to kill to get the job done, then okay, but I kind of hope they don't follow this pattern exactly because I want more of her on my television screen. I completely agree, and uh, I don't know if she'll die or not, but uh, you Ooh, know, I want Carol to do it. If she, oh yeah, exactly. That's another thing. So maybe Carol would be the one to do it. She has a lot of beef. Uh, Carol, who's terrible with kids, um, had another one die. As we all know, Henry got beheaded at the end of yeah! season nine. Woody, Woo! Woody was not a fan. So Carol has some serious beef. So I think we're going to see that. We've seen it in the trailer already that there's going to be some beef between them. I, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree slightly with both of you and go that this is the this is the one where they really stick straight to the comics. I think Negan gets out because his prison is a turnstile. He gets out, he gets to the whispers, we have the whole thing, and then you think like, oh man, an unholy alliance of Negan and the whispers, this is bad. And then like, psych, we murder Alpha because the, the Walking Dead isn't shy about just murdering characters True. wholesale, especially if like, if they have some renown, like I am shocked that Jeffrey Dean Morgan's like been in the show for this long. I thought they would have killed him off by now. I, I also think like given the TV to comics world, there is no Rick, there is no Carl in the TV show. So I think they're going to position, if I was going to take my big wild swing at it, that Negan gets to take that Rick role, which I thought <laughs> Rick role. Uh, shit. I would pause and laugh about it because that is 100% going in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a Rick roll. Thank you, Woody. <laughs> Never going to give you up. <laughs> Another huge storyline from the comics that came straight from the Whisperer War that we may or may not see this season is the total destruction of the hilltop. Uh, this is kind of what happens after Alpha gets beheaded. Beta leads a giant horde to Hilltop, and Maggie, Lydia, and the rest are forced to try to save it. Um, Woody, do you think that the Hilltop will suffer the same fate this season? You know, I, I think we've already uh, 
sacrificed the kingdom as like the community that's gonna that's just gonna go away so they've spent a lot of money on these sets i think it would be rough if they got rid of all of them uh that said i could see oceanside getting wiped off the map yeah i mean you know they keep going in and out uh of relevance in the show so i can i can definitely see that i also think like oceanside's kind of like the border and like the structures of it are pretty like ill-defined i think so like it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that difficult i think The other final storyline from the Whisper War in the comics is that after the Hilltops destroyed, our heroes somehow managed to survive, and it's time to usher the herd off a cliff 300 style. And what that eventually, unfortunately, leads to is the death of Andrea, who obviously has been dead on the show for a while. So Woody, do you think uh, this whole operation, A, will it happen, and B, will a major character as big as Andrea, uh, will they die? Uh, I think 100% that the you you don't you don't show the massive herd in the TV show that also is in the comics and don't use it. That herd is gonna show up at one of the communities, and in the comics, it's Alexandria. I feel like that would happen again. As far as who is the person who will die trying to get the the herd off, I. I kind of want to save it for later, but I can go into a little more detail. But I think Michonne will probably take the Angela spot of the person who's going to be like, you know, let's go and do it. And then sacrifices himself heroically trying to save Eugene's life. Fascinating. Naturally. I, Alexander, who do you think, uh, if anyone will take the Andrea role? Well, I would be, I'm very curious about the use of the herd. And I'll, so I'll get, I'll answer that question in a section in a second, but we've effectively seen a herd walk through Alexandria. And so I'm, I question whether or not the show would do that again, just at a larger scale or show or use the herd in a different, more sensational way. I agree with you that if we're going to lose a major character like Andrea in this in this way, that Michonne makes sense. But I'm still very mistrustful of the idea that Michonne's not going to see Rick Grimes again and that Rick's not going to meet Rick Jr. So. No, I, I think that's. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to discussing that in a, in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as for Major, I mean, as much as I love Melissa McBride and it would break my heart. Uh, no, don't I could, you. I know, I know. I could I could potentially see her maybe not saving Eugene because they don't seem like they have, she and Eugene and Carol don't seem to have much of a relationship. But the idea of seeing Carol go out with this final stand and just be like, just lose herself trying to defeat Alpha because that's a showdown that I want to see and I feel like we might. Oh, I, 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 I feel like that would be a that would be an amazing fight to see, a hundred percent. Just a stare off. I could just I could watch them in a bar angrily drinking bourbon at each other. That that'd be great. And you know that's actually uh, that's gonna be season eleven. Um, it's the web series. So we're gonna take our little glasses of spirits of the apocalypse for a segment we are calling shot takes. For shot takes, Woody, what is your big prediction for season ten? Zeke is dead. Really? There's nothing left for Zeke to live for. He is Aww. only here. And look, he was supposed to be dead in the comics. He was one of the heads in the pikes in the books. Uh, and I think, look, his his wife is gone. His kingdom is gone. His tiger is gone. Name a purpose besides telling Jerry what to do. Why Zeke is still around? I think he's I think he's dead. And I hate that because I love Zeke. I go to the barricades for Zeke, but he is dead. Oh, that is. That would be absolutely rough. We're huge fans of Kari Payton here. Alexandra, what is your hot take prediction for The Walking Dead season 10? I said it earlier, but my hot take prediction is that Michonne will not die when she exits The Walking Dead. And I think we will see Denai Gurira in one of these Rick Grimes movies. And that at some point, the Grimes family, such as it is, such as it is, such as it is will be reunited. I would love that. That would yeah. be a lot of fun. All right, my sh- uh, my shot take prediction, <laughs> and I, I think that we are going to meet the princess this uh, season. And yeah! I mean, she's not of actual royalty, but she is great. So they meet her in Pittsburgh uh, after Eugene receives a call from a faraway community called the Commonwealth. That's the next big storyline. We'll maybe see next season hopefully maybe they're the people who are trying to contact eugene on the radio at the end of last season we don't know but anyway i think we're gonna meet the princess and i think we're gonna get a bigger you know push into the commonwealth at the end of the season uh assuming that they wrap up the whisper war so we'll see if i can add one more just wild shot take. i wish you would mm-hmm. i think i don't think this will happen but i will lose my proverbial shit if Maggie shows up out of nowhere when like you think all hope is lost and she shows up with the Commonwealth and those like stormtrooper dudes yes. in the white armor and the Batman gauntlets. Oh my god, you they... guys, if they if we get like a Walking Dead Battle of the Bastards and the Commonwealth people are the Knights of the Veil, yeah. I will literally explode. Uh, I will lose I, like that's it. 
like that's all we're going to talk about for the podcast for that week like just how awesome it was and then compare various levels of enthusiasm i honestly can't wait uh this brings us to our next segment called ship watch uh alexandra what relationship or friendship are you most excited for this season carol and alpha i want all of Carol and Alpha. And second to that, Carol and Negan, which is just a perennial, like, three seasons <laughs> thing old that I've just always wanted to see Carol and Negan. Like, they share. just never met for just, no reason. I just want him to share a plate of cookies or something. And I want him, <laughs> I want her to confuse the crap out of him. And I want him to just be awed, be, like, stare at her in awe and wonder. And then it's done. And that's all I want. And then I kind of just, I just want Carol and Alpha again to, like, sit across the table with each other and just sneer and glare. And then I want Carol to walk away quietly, leave the room, and alpha realize one second too late that carol has left behind a homemade grenade Great. yeah Woody, really quick what relationship or friendship are you most looking forward to this season uh the continuing education of judith grimes with professor negan oh i love it it's the best Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Negan, uh, mine would definitely be <laughs> Negan and Lydia. They're they two are. people from different enemy groups that I'm just really excited to see. I mean, they have a lot in common. They're both getting the side eye from a lot of people in Alexandria. And I just think they're going to be great allies. That That's my prediction. I have no information. I can't believe that Carol and Negan haven't met. I know. It's It's strange. The amount of, like, foul-mouthed adoration that Negan would have for Carol and her, like, skill set would go on for, like... Holy shit! I just, Look at you! You're the deadliest woman I've ever seen. Type thing. Yes, that's my I Jeffrey love it. Team Oh my gosh! It's they. I really want them to take a walk together. That's all. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm not asking for a lot, but just for them to like go on a hike, go on like one small mission. Like if they just have some kind of heist adventure, yeah. that's just a bottle episode yeah. that we get. I would be elated i just yeah i think that they have a lot of like natural untapped chemistry and i've asked jeffrey dean morgan and melissa mcbride about this twice at two different press conferences and jeffrey dean morgan said and i quote i like cookies so i mean if that's not tacit confirmation that these two were meant to be oh, i don't right, know carol bakes is like, yep that oh my gosh oh boy baking and assassination that's Make her middle name all right <laughs> and that was another edition of ship watch <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is typically where we're going to have a guest in future episodes, but we have some awesome clips from the actors. We actually got to go to The Walking Dead season 10 premiere last week at the TCL Chinese Theater here in Los Angeles. And our reporter, Chelsea Cook, at who is Chelsea underscore, uh, amazing, amazing person, is got to talk to all of our actors. Let's roll some clips from the red carpet. Can we expect from Aaron in yeah. season 10? Uh, it's a much more brutal Aaron. I think you know, we've, we've always seen Aaron as this kind of nice, diplomatic guy. And it's, it's lovely to see that version of him for so many years because he's, he always believes in the goodness of other people. But I think this is the first year where he's he's kind of at the end of his rope. And if he senses any sort of um, evil or malice is evil, he's not going to hesitate to either take them out or put him down entirely uh, because he, he can't afford to, to give people the, the benefit of the doubt anymore. I don't even understand. Oh, he's a yeah, friend friends. He just lost Jesus. Um, are we going to see him taking more of the leadership role? He will, yes. I think, I mean, he's definitely going to be taking over uh, a lot of the militia duties, um, leading the troops to fight against the whispers. And that's, that's exciting. Oh, my God. Is this Kirkman's crew? No. I swear to God, what? We're we causing havoc tonight. You know what? I'm just still. I'm still. Uh, I'm still upset at the like the 14 layers of clothing that he put on this this uh, character. When it damn knew, he knew he knew where I was. He knew where somebody was gonna have to shoot this thing. He knew it was like 90, you know, uh, percent humidity. That it never gets you know colder than than 89 degrees. And 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 still, just me. Can you tell us what's next for King Ezekiel now that he's lost Carol, he's lost the kingdom? Where do we see him go now? Does he take off the, the layers? Uh, you know what? I think he, he actually has uh, decided to kind of retire. Uh, like moving to Boca, opening like a, you know, a, a little karaoke bar. That way he can still, you know, get a little stage time. But at the same time, you know, not feel like he's in charge of things. I, I, I really do think he's got to kind of recharge his batteries a little bit, you know. It was a lot of loss. There's a lot of loss. And, um, and uh, 
it's a lot of um, you know, kind of PTSD, you know, that that he's uh, that he's having to learn how to deal with. So, um, so yeah, yeah, it's 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 even though they're they're in the middle of this thing and they they've got a fight that still needs to be had. It's um, it's uh, dealing with the fight that was that was, you got to lick your wounds a little bit. You gotta you gotta recover. The thing is, The Walking Dead doesn't give you much time to recover. There's you know? no recovering time. No, in the no, no. There's always things moaning and growling and trying to bite your hands. Hi, Melissa. I'm Chelsea with Skybound. How are you? Fine, thanks. So, first of all, Carol has one of the biggest character developments to me. You know, when she started out, she was definitely just like a bit timid, quiet, and now we see her and she's like the biggest warrior on the show. What has that journey been like for you? It's been pretty amazing to play this character to see where, where she's landed ten seasons in. Yeah, it's, it's very compelling, very satisfying, very... Uh, I don't want to say too too much of a challenge, it just seems to have made sense. Yeah, it's been amazing to play. It's been really nice to see someone like that just rise up. Like, yeah. it's kind of like underdog stories. Um, what can we look forward to seeing from Carol in season 10? Well, let's see. I came to specific files. She's doing some things I've never seen her do before. I, as an actress, have never done before. Some fun, stunty stuff. Yeah, there's some emotional aspects of character. And there are some visual aspects of character. Too, that's I know. Which to me says a lot. Yeah, no, we get, it seems like we get to see a little bit more development from Carol as well and get to see her grow even more. Well, congratulations on season 10. We look forward to seeing where Carol goes next. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chelsea. I'm from Skybound. How are you? I'm good. Hi. I love your dress. You look really beautiful. Thank you. So, how is it to play Judith Grimes, and what has been your favorite scenes to film so far? Um, it's amazing getting to play Judith Grimes. I get to do so many cool things, like using weapons and killing zombies. But my favorite scene, I love the scene in episode 914. It was Judith's first on-screen walking show, and that was really fun for me to shoot. I got to use Katana, and I got to work with Nine, and it was just a really fun thing. That sounds really fun, especially when it's something you don't normally get to do, yeah, you know? know right? When you get just to swing around a sword all the time. I know. Oh, it's awesome. So what's it like just being a kid and having to do homework yourself on set? Because you know you're seen in the show having to do homework and just be a kid as well. So but that's like a lot in your real life. So how hard is that to juggle for you? Um, so whenever we're not filming, I have to do school. So uh, it's not that hard because I'm homeschooled so I can do whatever I need to do, but it's not that hard, but it's kinda of like just going through. Hi guys, I'm Chelsea with the uh, first five on. Have you ever heard that company? Um, it's just a little show, and you know, we're, you know, when they come for themselves, the Walking Dead family. I've never heard of it, but you know what? We'll talk to anyone on this red carpet, so let's do it. But congratulations on Super Dance Tour, which is coming to Amazon. Thank you, yeah. And uh, I'm going to say October 6th. Uh, is that the date? Yeah, no, we, uh, we partnered with Spin Master. Uh, we made an awesome uh, television show, and uh, there's going to be a crazy toy line and all kinds of stuff. I could not be more excited. What is it like? I would like to say it's quieter, but it's really not. Uh, uh, I guess when you know when a gap opens, there are new projects that rush in there to fill it. So I've got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that isn't really public yet, uh, which is exciting. Uh, I was hoping things would slow down a little bit. That was part of the reason I was happy that the book was ending. But uh, yeah, that hasn't really happened. So I don't know. I haven't really had time to poke my head up and realize, like, oh, what's it like now that, that I'm not writing the comic just because things have been moving so much. Much behind the scenes. Well, How's it going? I'm Chelsea from Skybound. It's How really lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so, Daryl has had like a really big transformation. When we first saw him in the first season, you know, he's kind of an outcast. And now we see him now, he's taking more in a leadership role. What has Reluctantly. The yeah. Yes. Kind of. But what has that like 10 seasons been like? What has the journey been like for you? And what do we expect to see from uh, you this year? It's like, you know, like I was just saying, like, you know, he used to, it's like when Alpha comes to the door and she's like, open the door, who's the leader? I'm visiting, I don't even live in, I live in Hilltop, and she's like, open the door, who's the leader? And I'm looking around and nobody says anything, I'm like, okay, I'll do it. You know, he's kind of reluctantly taking care of people for the first time. I think uh, he's kind of got the ghosts of all these characters that have been there before, like Herschel and Rick and you know, Shane, all these other characters. So he kind of has the weight of all the things that he's learned and you know, he's kind of taking with him into this, this season. He's kind of, see these gray hairs? That's from this show. So he's like the wise, he's getting wiser. He's such a hot He's learning that he's the only one left that has to step up. Yeah. 
reluctantly. It's like, you know, he cares about these people and they've, they've taken care of him in many ways. And he's, he's got to make decisions. He's got to think on his feet for everybody else. They, there can't be mistakes made, you know. So. Nice to meet you, too. Okay, so Negan has been through a lot, and I feel like we see different versions of Negan. At first, when we see him, he's like really hardcore and mean, and then we see him in the Alexandria. He's a mean. He's okay, mean. Maybe, maybe that's a personal opinion. Uh, don't at me, but. Uh, <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. Uh, I think for the first couple of years, uh, as an audience, we see Negan as a mean guy. Um, uh, and then, you know, last year he spent the year in jail and we, uh, very broken. And that, everybody asked me all the time, was that real? Or was Negan bullshitting Maggie? Uh, no, he was that miserable and he wanted to not be alive anymore. Um, but then he has this relationship, I think, with, with Judith in particular. Um, and it brings out another side in Negan. So the audience got to see a part of Negan that they'd never seen before. And I think, frankly, it shocks some people uh, that underneath the exterior, this guy that has done these, you know, killed two of our people that we loved in the show, that there's a heart underneath there. Um, and I think what that's led to is uh, this season 10 that we're uh, embarking on now. And so now we've got this three-dimensional character that we know can be all these different things. Um, and so now we get to see kind of all of Negan, and he's going to be out of jail. So that's that's fucking awesome. So all of Negan free. Come on. That was a lot more than I was expecting. I was like, we see good Negan, but no, we get all of Negan, which kind of terrifies me. All of Negan. <laughs>We got some great bits from the red carpet there, right? It sounded like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was great. Um, Why couldn't we get Dog? Dog was unavailable. That's fair. Dog's very popular. He was doing a a charity. And that wraps up our Walking Dead Season 10 preview. Guys, thank you so much for being here for the first episode. I think we hit it out of the park. Yeah, Absolutely the best episode of Talk Dead to Me yet. Absolutely. Alexander, how'd how'd you like it? Totally agree. Great. Uh, guys, make sure to like and subscribe to our podcast. You can find it on all major podcast platforms such as iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, MySpace, Tumblr, Grinder. They catch a MySpace in there? Yep. We, you were so Grinder's okay, but MySpace is the one that caught your Oh absolutely. Yeah, you just you want to go where the audience is. MySpace was originally a music platform. No, it wasn't. No, or it, a, it was a, music. Wasn't it a music? It, it got in the, turned in into the later one. terms of its life. It became more. They true. threw a lot of I money at Justin Timberlake and tried to revamp it. And-